Okay, so this is the super keyword. It is present in the AP curriculum in Unit 9, Inheritance. Since it's in the curriculum, it is expected for those of you taking AP should know it since it's going to appear on the exam. So, the super keyword. The main use of the super keyword is to make a call to a method that is located in the super class. Also known as the parent class. That is the one most recognizable way of using the super keyword. It is just used to make a call to a method that's located in the super class. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. I have a class, right? And I'm going to call it any. Let's say that I have a method in my class. I'm going to call it, let's call it say hello. It's not going to take in any parameters. And what we're going to make it do is we're just going to print So this right here is what I'm going to call our super class. This, since this, this, this video is about the super keyword, I'm going to be addressing it as a super class, but which is why I put it in parentheses. They're synonyms, so you can use them interchangeably. Okay. And then we can have a class B. This class will extend A. So this is going to be our child class. And what we can do here is we can make a method called say hi. Or how about this? Why don't we just override the method? So we're going to override the say hello method. We're going to and we're going to say hello. It's not going to take it anything. And we're just going to, what we're going to do now is we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of just printing hello, Instead, if we want to achieve the same task of this method, what we can do is we can just, since our method is void, we know that it won't return a value. What we can do is we can call the super keyword and then the method, say hello. And what that's going to do is that this is just going to print So when we make a call to this class, when we create an object and then we print it, you're going to get this method and it's going to print. It's just going to simply print hello. So super dot say hello. What this does is that super means that we're going to the method that is in the super class. So we're going to trace back this method that was all the way in our super class. And then we're going to run it and we're going to just going to print hello. So this method is still going to print hello. That method will still print hello. But since we're overriding the method, it won't print hello twice. It'll only print it once. If we wanted to, we can make a super call twice. So we can make super dot say hello and then super dot say hello again. And then that's going to print hello twice, both on two separate lines since we used a print. So that's really it. That's how the super keyword works in Java. So now I'm going to demonstrate a little bit about how the super keyword works. 
I've not talked about method overriding, and that's going to come a little bit shortly after polymorphism. So method overriding, once again, is just a type of polymorphism. So it just makes more sense to color polymorphism than method overriding. So whatever I'm going to be doing here a little bit is kind of new, but I hope that's okay. Um, I think I might not override the method just because I've not taught what method overriding is. We'll see how it goes throughout this course of the video. Um, if I do put in method over, I might change it. Um, I might figure out something to do because I've not covered method overriding yet, so I don't want to give too much information and confuse you all. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Well, let's make a parent class and let's definitely make a child class. We're going to make it extend the parent. It's going to inherit parent. So this is going to be our super class. I'm putting the synonyms in case. Um, super class, parent class, child class, subclass, or interchangeably used. They're synonyms. Okay, and then we have our main class. Super. And then we have our main method. All right. So, sarcasm intended. Everyone's favorite food is green beans. Am I right? Okay, so, assume all the 7 billion people in this world, their only food that they can eat is green beans. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make a method, and we're going to call it human food. And what we're going to do is we're just going to print out green and add a little bit of a space there. And what that's going to do is that it's just going to print out the word green. After that, the next thing that we can do is we can print out, make this v1. And then what I can do is I can make a public void human food, call this v2. It won't take in any parameters. And then what I can do here is I can use the super keyword to call the method in my super class or my parent class. So I can use super.humanfoodv1, right? And then I can just print beans, right? What this did is that it called the method in human food, it called the method in our parent class, humanfoodv1. It's going to run that method. And then after that, it's just going to print beans right after that. So then what we can do here is we can create a child class and then we can just do c dot whatever the name is our human food v2 does that look good oh oops make sure you know the correct syntax for initializing objects that is very key here let it load a little bit and let's run and now you see our terminal has printed green beans. And that is exactly what we really wanted to do. A special thing that um, we could also do, like I mentioned in the beginning, we could override our human food method. Um, I've not talked about method overriding, so you can kind of ignore this part if you don't know what it is. But for those of you who are curious to know how the method overriding part works with this lesson, is you can just override the method and then you can make it super.humanfood and then you can just simply print beans. And then I can call my human food method with my object and then I can run it and it still does the same thing but this is just an alternative way to do what I did previously this is called method overriding I've not taught it so but for those of you who kind of want to get a little bit of a glimpse of what it's going to be this is literally how method overriding works so I kind of fit in two lessons in one I fit in the super keyword and method overriding Needless to say, I will still cover method overriding. It's just I thought I would give a little bit of a glimpse on how that would work, since that will come shortly after my next video, which is polymorphism. And by the way, stay tuned to the polymorphism video and stay tuned to the method overriding video. Both of those are fun. Um, once you understand polymorphism, you'll understand how the method overriding works, since method overriding is a type of polymorphism. It's known as runtime polymorphism. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button down below. We covered over the super keyword once again. The super keyword is used to make a call to the super class that contains, that is used to call to a method that is located in a super class. So that's all you really need to know. I'm gonna put that in comments. Super keyword is used to make a call to the method that is in the super class parent class and that and then
Okay, there, so I kind of commented out. Um, I'm going to send this code in the comments down below. It's going to be like a link to my GitHub where you can go ahead and view this code. I'm going to comment it out a little bit more when I post it there. That way you can understand fully how the super keyword works. But the main takeaway of it is that it's just used to make a call to the super to the method that is in the super class or the parent class. So you can see that we made a call to our human food method in our super class. And that's kind of what the super keyword does. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys next time.